Alrighty, so, now I'm going to explain how everything works. In the control room, anyway. Right, so, this console. In here, you, you press this, you type in the address, and then you just hit it and it'll go. There we go. Sometimes it takes a couple hits. Uh, you can press this button to stop it or disengage the wormhole at any point. This one, one works exactly the same way, except it activates that gate instead, obviously, because it's Milky Way gate versus Pegasus gate. Um, let's... Or, let me just stop this real quick. Ugh. Ugh. Fucking turn off. There we go. Ahem. Anyway. So. Now, the next thing. I'm going to show you how to change the master code and how to change the gate code. Because uh, the, these are both very important to know. So, the first thing to do, pretty much before you do anything except for activate the gate, you need to enter the master code. The default master code is 0000, zero, 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 zero or, sorry, 000. Zero, 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 zero. Hit enter. It'll enter the code. This light will turn on. If this light is on, you can do things. So, if the light's just on, you can do, you can change the radio accepting commands, like that. You just press this button. If it's red, the radio, it will not accept commands from the radio. And the only commands the radio can do is it can change the code and it can activate the self-destruct. Uh, so, that what that means is, if somebody has a radio and the master override code, they can remotely self-destruct the space station. But they have to have the master code to do it, so it's not really a security risk. Um, per se. Uh, however, oh, this is not going to be an R scenario, but, um, you, if you are concerned, just turn it off, and then it can't do it. However, uh, the gate operational light, this light, uh, you'll notice I cannot manipulate. That is because the gate code, or rather, it's because I changed the gate code, uh, but I can override it back, and now I can change it. Uh, so, by default, both the master code and the gate code are zero. Zero, zero, zero. So normally, if you just enter in zero, 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 like that, you can change anything you want. This part, you change. That part, you can change. Um, and you can activate self-struct, which I'll get to more in a second. Um, however, if you want to change the codes, you enter in your master code, like so. Then you enter in whatever you want the code to become. So let's say you want to make the code 19... 45. Alright, so I changed that, and then I hit this button. Now the master code has been changed to 1945, so if I enter in no text, you'll notice in a second that this light will become red, indicating that the code is no longer valid and you can no longer uh, enter any commands. Now, see, if I try to change this, nope. And if I try to change this, also nope. However, if I enter in 1945, the code validated light turns on, and I can change this. But I cannot change this, because I need to enter the gate code now, which is a second separate code, which I believe is set to 1, 2, 3, 4. Or no, I think I changed it to, I changed it to, yeah, 1945, 0, 0, 0, 0, and now I can change this. Alright, so that's that part. Uh, the gate code override works almost identically. I set the master code, and then whatever I want this new code to be, I'll set to 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's easy. Change that. Now, you'll notice I can do this because I just entered 1, 2, 3, 4, but if I do that, can't do it. If I do 1945, still can't do it. If I do uh, what it used to be, 0, 0, 0, 0, I still can't do it. I have to enter in 1, 2, 3, 4, and... Er, then I can change it. Like that. Alright, the final thing is the self-destruct. So, naturally, if your space station is being invaded by, say, I don't know, a bunch of wraith, and you need to activate the self-destruct, uh, well, all you need to do is input your master code, ours being 1945, uh, and then you want to activate it using this do not press button, which I thought was most appropriate for a self-destruct. Um, so if you press this button, it will activate the self-destruct, and kaboom. But, there's more. Another thing you can do is, I can activate it, and then, you hear a charging background, I can deactivate it with this stop button. And all this stop button requires is that the mask code be put in, so you want to absolutely clear it if you're going to activate the self-destruct, and make sure the person who's about to come inside the door doesn't know what it is, 
so they cannot stop it. The other thing you can do is you can change the length of the self-destruct countdown. So if you want to change it to like a quick like two seconds or something so that nobody could possibly escape, you can do that, um, which I will now demonstrate for you. So it changes to two, then I activate this, it'll go kaboom in like two seconds. Like, should be pretty much now, I'd imagine. And for some reason it's not. It's definitely been more than two seconds. But yeah, so you can change how long it takes to blow up, and uh, you can also change, um, what was I going to say? Uh, you can also abort the self-destruct. No? Okay, I'm live. Alright, so you can abort the self-destruct, and you can change the time, you can set the self-destruct, and like I said, just remember to clear the code when you're done so that no pesky wraiths can access it. Uh, that's pretty much it for the control system, because actually it's pretty simple. I was going to make it a much, much more complicated system, and then I was like, nah, nah, that, that's okay. Um, so, assuming that there are enough people uh, interested in the whole midway invasion scenario thingy, um, which you can still post in the comments for this video too, because I'm sure I will read them both. Um, then I will, uh, release another video at some point describing more about that. So, thanks for watching, and goodbye.